Welcome back, everybody, to more Pro League here on Tuesday, live at the next one arena. I am Valdez with me as Wolf today. We got Casey Rolster versus Fennin coming up for the second match and the main match of the night. Should be an exciting one, much better than the, uh, the matchup that we saw earlier, as uh, that one was very one sided. And clearly, Jin Air brought their A game. Prime brought theirs too, but it's just not Jin Air class. KT Rolster with an even 1 1 record so far this season with a flat indicator. Uh, the best start for them they've ever had. Spenny here may be a, a good team to, to take down today. I definitely favor them coming into here, but let's see what Spenny's going to bring. First game here actually is very interesting. Flash versus Dongri Gu. It's a matchup we actually saw like four times last season. Um, we saw it on the, the sickest match was the mech game that we saw in King Sejong Station that won Ace match. MVP versus KT Rolster, that was really cool. We saw them play against each other on many, many maps uh, last year. So they have like a big history together. Um, but, you know, playing this matchup, it's, DRG's been a bit of a slump flash, kind of on the way out of his. DRG seems to be kind of on the way out of his as well. And uh, there's Curious, who actually have to play as ZVZ later tonight. Gotta wake up for that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is boring. I just want to play my match. Uh, funny that also DRG just coming out very consistently on Cactus Valley. He must really like this match. And we'll see what he can do against Flash. Zergs have been liking it overall, I feel, against Terrans. Yeah. Uh, letting it come through in uh, all sorts of different individual leagues. A lot of Terrans actually batting it out as well. So. Hmm. I, I feel like if. If uh, Spenno can win versus Life, they might be able to force the ace match. It's totally doable. Not because Jachi, but that's like mm. one of the points they have to get. And then if they get any of the other points, then you Yeah, I, I think it's this first one. Uh, because honestly, Zest versus Bomber, I think, might be the most one sided one of the night, even more so than Stats versus Jachi, just because Stats has been going like recently. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I'm not really sure where he's at. I'm, I'm very curious. I want to see that match. I don't want this just to be another very quick 3-0 and have us, you know, end the night with the quickest day of Pro League ever. Uh, I would love to see him actually come out and see what he's, how he's feeling, how he's playing. Yeah, I think those two Zergs, DRG and Curious, are definitely the ones yeah. um, that they need to win. For sure. That's, uh, that's the most important thing for today. Also, game four, you know, Stats can play as Phoenix play. He can kind of survive on Bonnie Research Station, I suppose. Kind of go to that late game like Classic is doing these days. And uh, we'll see how much Jack is going to be able to do on that map. I just called him Jack G. Going straight you up Merc in here. You're super Yumiguki in you. <laughs> um, Can't wait to see Jack G. Let's see Jack G and uh, Curious and Bomber. <laughs> no, man, that's a Bomber. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Dong Ragu. Dong Ragu. Spaghetti sauce, Zerg. <laughs> Will Spenel, Spenu be able to revenge against life? I don't know, Wolf. Can they? Can they revenge against life? Let's see. And Zest will be back on the top of the winner's ranking. We'll see about that as well. Is he really? Oh, yeah, I guess he is. He's up at like 16 to 9 right now. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent. Or maybe 16 times. and 10. I think he hit 10 and 10 at one point. And then he's just been on a very big winning streak for a while. No, he's 16 and 11. Okay. There you have it. He is up at the top. He's actually played the most game out of any player in the entire Pro League. So he gets worked out there on that KT roster. All right, just one more time. Order to maintain a clean esports environment, the official clock in game has been removed for spectators. Does that mean we can't have any more dank memes or what? Uh, maybe. I don't even. Well, I guess we still got Twitch chat, so we're fine. We're good. Oh, we're back. Whoa, well, you and I were just chilling. Do you know what the Do you know what the cool. reason? <laughs> Do you know what the reason for this is, Wolf? The game clock change? No, no, no. I mean the delay. Oh, Flash, actually. I just Our got producer the gave it away. I was putting Wolf on the spot here. I had a feeling um, that <laughs> it's it always flash. flash. It's always Flash. I don't know what he does. I don't know, you know, like, those guys have been out of the booth for a very long time. But flash. It's not like he had 10 minutes plus to set up for this one. No, definitely not. Um, I guess he just, you know, he likes his warm-up time. And then after his warm-up, he, you know, he's got to take his ruler out, get his, you know, everybody knows what Flash does. So... 
Yeah, he, he likes to have his um, mouse pad taped down. Monitor height is important. Ruler for where the mouse pad needs to be taped down, where his keyboard is supposed to be, how far his keyboard is supposed to be away from the monitor, how high his, his monitor is supposed to be. Um, and perhaps yeah. uh, likes to, I don't know, what else could he measure? Um, Did you say chair height? Oh, no, I didn't say that because one. Because it's always funny when he's he's in the booth and he's like, no, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes up and down. Exactly. We've actually watched him do that before. It's really funny. He's like he needs to have that moment where he puts the he does the Picari uh Picari sweat squirrel cheeks. Right? Oh yeah. He puts the Picari sweat and does the squirrel cheeks for a minute and he's like, Okay, now I know where my chair height needs like, to be. Okay, this is at the right temperature now I can join the game. Like He's like if the if the Picari sweat goes like too much into one cheek, I know the chair's not level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm leaning slightly to the right by, you know, point five degrees, so this is definitely not correct. He's like, uh, I need a new chair. <laughs> He's definitely done that before. Um, uh, it's definitely happened. At he's some like, point. I need my computer to run Windows 2000 ME. Uh, that's what I played my Brewer on, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I want it to be oh, this boy. way. Yeah. Um, and it's it's rubbed off on Zest too with the lights. Um, Zest will not play if there is any light from any direction shining at any level. He always blames all. us too. I'm like, we're not even. Sometimes he's like, yeah. he's like the foreign caster lights. I'm like, we're not out there today. Yeah, that's we're in the booth now. Us. Like, we're there's like, not even a light there. Like, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like Zest. No, it's we'll not see, that we'll bright, see what man. he says. Um, he, he needs to get those those tint those glasses that like tent with the light. You know what I'm talking about? Like those like those glasses that I think oh. are called transition lenses, where if it's yeah, like, right, bright, it like right. gets darker. Yeah, he um, should. That would be really cool, actually. It would look cool in the booth, right? Yeah. Um, I think like Hot Forever used to put sunglasses sometimes. I don't know how you could do that, actually. I think uh, there's wasn't there a World of Tanks team that actually wears a bunch of sunglasses? Yeah, I'm trying to remember which one that was. Was that Arte? They might just wear it on I'm camera sure, and take it off in game, but there's a Smash Bros. player that was playing with sunglasses. I think it was um, Hungrybox was playing at Evo with sunglasses on for part of his run, which is pretty impressive because I mean, that game is so fast and like so furious. I can't. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I understand sunglasses for like poker. You want to have your poker face right, but why when you're playing games? Do they just have very sensitive eyes? The lights hurt them. Yeah, maybe. I if mean, they're just used to it. Do they play like that at home? They like sit in their dark room with sunglasses on. <laughs> I mean, I guess if if like you're on camera, perhaps, and there's a lot of cameras you're not used to, you might want to put sunglasses on. Um, yeah. If you're not used to like being on camera, I mean, these lights that we have above our head, like my eyes, you're just looking at them for a second. I mean, they are really bright. If you're not used to that, like, it's. Yeah. it's I just did that too for some reason. I followed you. I just did it again. Um, it's really intense, and um, sometimes you have lights right behind the camera as well, and you guys like probably see me like cry before. It's not because like I'm super emotional <laughs> about the game. It's just because like oh, I'm dude. like, oh god, over I've been at on GSL, for too it's long. like uh, if you have a cold, you're at GSL. You got the giant one right above the camera. You're like trying to look at it, but you're like closing your eyes. You're like, Ugh. No. <laughs> Why can't they just get us off camera already? Uh, you get used to it eventually, but yeah. um, there's like even actually like uh, glasses that are made for for playing games. You know that they're supposed gunners. to like yeah, exactly. I think that's yeah. the gunners, and there there might be another one as well. But it's supposed to like maybe you know make it so that your the monitor light doesn't actually hurt your eyes. Yeah. It's an application. It's like flux for your eyes. Exactly. Or there's an application called Flux. If you look up Flux, I think it's like. FL.UX might be the website even. Just just Google it, and you'll find it. Just look up Flux Lights, something like that, mm -hmm. and it'll actually adjust your computer monitor brightness depending on what time of day it is. So if you're up until even, like, 6 a.m., for example, it'll adjust it to, like, remind you of, like, hey, it's time to go to bed, you know, sort yeah. of thing, and, like, make sure that um, when you're up in the middle of the night, it's dimmed so your eyes are not constantly getting burned as if you're outside during the day, which can really mess with your sleep schedule. Makes, yeah, exactly. It makes it uh, easier to just slowly wind down with your computer if you're going to stay on it late. And you know what? Uh, it, it does change depending on which, like, if you have StarCraft in, like, windowed mode or if you have it in full screen, it may, it may or not actually be applied. So you can, And you can also change it for settings like if you don't like it when you're gaming. The first time I ever saw this application, though, was an old TSL house. So I was like, what is wrong with his monitor? And the coach was like, no, he uses this program. It's good for your eyes. You should use it, too. And I started, and it's good, man. All right, Flash is ready. Thank you, Flash. You finally made it. You're here in the booth. Oh, still fidgeting there. Oh, he doesn't have Picari sweat. He's got water. Yeah, he might have both. Last time he had Picari sweat, water, and coffee when I was commentating. <laughs> he had all three. Yeah, he sometimes oh, has. Oh, the chair. Like a, oh, is it okay, Flash? Does it feel okay? All right, is it the squirrel cheeks? Wait for it. He's chugging it, man. Too much coffee. No, he drank it all. I know that feel. Well, Flash. Versus DRG here. Rivals in Pro League. Oh, oh this Cowboy song. Bebop OST, man. Great. I love this song. This actually reminds me, I got like 
two-thirds of the way through Cowboy Bebop. I didn't finish it yet. I got to do that. Look at the six and six, these two. They are Whoa. sick Pro League rivals, man. I actually think this is like the coolest matchup of the night. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it could go easily either way. Uh, Flash has been playing better and better, but mainly against Protoss. You know, that very greedy style. I we'll hope, see how he does here. I hope we get to see predictions, because I think this one was actually pretty even. I would say it was. If we don't get to see it, we'll talk about it in the game. Let's jump into that right now. Down here in the bottom right in the red for KT Rolster, the Terran player, it is Flash. On top ya. On top. Up to the top right, actually, which is in this case the correct. <laughs> Stone Riku is in this case quite actually on top of the map on the right side. Is that him? You're it's gonna like win today for sure, right? You gotta win today, right? No, GG girl. We were just talking about how this is the most even matchup. Pay attention, please. So, um, Team Salmon, all three of us go for Flash. Uh, Dayhan, the analyst, he's got a pretty sick win rate this uh, this round. He's ha winning. Yeah, he's going for um, DRG here, and so does Kanata. Goes for DRG. So four to two spread. Monday caster with Team Salmon on this one. Dan was with us on the first map uh, for Prime, Yoda versus Czech. So he's doing well today as well. But this is the first time we're fighting head to head. I gotta get tied with him once again. Yeah. Well, this uh, map, obviously one of the bigger maps in the pool flash, as he's want to do. Drinking some Bakari sweat. See that? He's Put like, I don't know if now. this is correct, actually. Oh, <laughs> the mouse pad. It's not perfect. He's like, oh, now I have to CC first because I definitely can't. I have to just keep mine. I don't have. I have to make sure my mouse is in the right place. What if I accidentally blow my barracks off one hex? Okay, there's a CC going down. And DRG obviously blind, double extra drone because flash CC first very often, very rarely proxies, and it's this four-player map. Yeah, I wouldn't have even been mad if DRG just did like quick three base. It's not as common these days, uh, Zergs, as we said before. Much more liking that two base lair and a lot of Midas coming out early, try to get that map control and then eventually take a safer third base. But against Flash, it's like, well, this guy is almost always going to CC first on this map. I'd say, like, probably 97% of the time. I would go with, like, 109% <laughs> of the time. <laughs> You're probably more correct than I am, actually. Like, he's going to CC first 100% on this map and 9% of the time on that UMS map, Bloodbath, on Brood War, where it's just like a four-player map with the smallest map in the game that's ever been made. Like, he's going to CC first on that map like 9% of the time. It, like, spills over, lose every time. <laughs> I know somebody out there is like, oh, I remember Bloodbath. I'm like, yeah, that map was terrible. That wasn't even fun if you played with your friends. It but it was like, a Bloodbath, right? Yeah. I mean, exactly. I'm sure Doa would be proud. I mean, it was aptly named uh, as a as a brood war map. Might not even been UMS. Might have actually just been a Blizzard map. It was bad though. It was it was every time on US East, I'd go the the join and they'd be there and I'd be like, nobody's gonna join this. It would be like I'd like one day I'd be like, you know what? I'm just gonna try this. I click on it, and be like, game is full. I'm like, can't believe it. <laughs> and then I'd, my screen would lock out black and I'm like, ah. Oh. And people were like, the brood war system was way better than StarCraft II. So I'm like, well. In a lot of ways, yes, but there definitely were some improvements made. <laughs> yeah. All right. I wonder why DRG, or we got a shot of that. Maybe it's because Yoda, was it Yoda? Or Keen? No, it was Yoda on this map. Uh, took out the Overlord in the same position. Just, uh, they were cross spawns. Yeah. Get rid of those plates. Those plates are gone. Zerling did his job. Yep. They don't belong. Flash is not getting rid of his plates yet. We only want to talk about the most relevant information. Sure, here in the early sure. Game. Um, let's not talk about the Hellions or the speed or the extra drones he's uh, making to the late third. It's all about nah. uh, all about those plates, man. The plates <laughs> still active. But nobody wants to know about how many queens he's making or if he's supply blocks with that Overlord right now. Oh, man. So, 
Well, he is supply blocks with that overlord, and he's only <laughs> making one. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be all right. It's still early game. Still, uh, let me go into two base layer, it looks like. Making six lings. Okay, it does make a third base. There's the lair. So, okay. a quick lair with a third base, and it's going to be Hellbats. This is a bit Ooh. unlike Flash. This might become a bit unexpected. Yeah, I don't... I'm not sure if this build from Dongaguru is going to be able to hold this. Can't like usually we only see two base lair or like a third base that comes out very fast. You know, if they are going to get that third base, usually it comes down maybe a minute after that lair. I guess DRG is just saying, "Oh, it's very very safe back here in these positions," so I don't really need to worry about it. I think uh, I don't think this is going to be like an all in for Flash. I think he's actually going to make a third CC behind this and uh, go mech. He's not making any Marines right now. And he's making cloak he's got for cloak banshees. banshees on the way too. Yeah, I think he just wants to do a lot of damage with this and easily transition into a follow up. But I don't think he's going for the kill with this. The armory is done, Let's so see. he can actually unload these and then transform all of them into hellbats. Yeah. Plus, he's got this run by potential. This is a wolf build, right? Basically, you said this uh, one time, and then he actually did it. Yeah, <laughs> before it was really that popular. But here we go. He's going to run in the front at the same time with two hellions. This is what you do, man. This is how you drop four hellbats. Actually, he's like, how does he do that with one medevac? Okay. Well, we're gonna get a nice surround here, and the queens in the back, very protected. Yeah, we push this back, and the Hellions are not going in the front. Exactly, and, and with the queens zoning this so well, he couldn't have even like done individual micro tricks with this because the queens would just target down the meta back. He has to just pull back. Does save two, which is the max you can actually retreat with. Is gonna heal them up here. The run by potential is there, like you said, but he's transitioning. Third base, cloak banshees plus one. He's going into mech. As uh, you know, as I predicted before, mm -hmm. just seemed that way. And uh, and I, I, I like how he's going into a pretty heavy Banshee style to just start it off. It's going to be a very hard force for DRD to deal with. Uh, he's going to have to rely on a lot of these queens to deal with the Banshees in the sky. Yeah. Uh, he does have that earlier lair for the Overseer, so that's really going to help him out. That's really important. The the Banshee here is ideally designed to kill the um, to kill the Banelings before they actually connect with the Hellbats. In this case, the queens are zoning so well that it's basically impossible. Oh, look at the split. The split is... Well, it was okay. Actually, the, those ban uh, those Banelings getting three of those Hellbats as they bumped up. But the, the Lings are coming forward. That hatchery is really low. All the Lings do go down. Well, at least three of them left over. He's even going to pull the drones here. I guess he's just going up that, uh, that mineral line, actually. There's just so many Queens with so much energy that uh, even though that trade was starting to look really good for Flash, it got less appealing as time went on. So he's even going to try to waddle those Hellbats away. This Banshee over here. Just two kills, it looks like, so not a whole lot of damage done. Plus yeah. one nearly finished, actually. If that fight went any longer, it would have actually had that extra little bit of firepower to add in. DRG's going to go aggressive on the back of this, morphing a bunch of Banes at the front door of Flash. Has a big swell of Mutas at the same time. Going to stay pretty low economy. He's only making two, but it might be enough to, to break this front. Flash is not paying attention. Flash does have a tech lot factory right now, which Mutalus will scout. So he can make a siege tank for safety. He's actually going to go Thor first as he sees Mutalus, though, of course. And, oh, you know... Giant pull here. This is, a, this is a lot of damage being done already. And he's going to go back into the main. He doesn't even know what to do with these SCDs. He's losing so much stuff that Thor is so late. Oh, and all these Hellions trying to trade here. It looks like they will be okay. So much damage done, though. 13 SCDs going down. And DRG is, is carefully, safely mining off the base, no problem, with 56 drones. Killing a refinery, even going to kill this tech lab. And, you know, like you said, he only made two banlings. He didn't really commit. I thought he made more. So just the Thors here are making a lot of sense here, coming out for Flash to defend this. But he's already taken so many losses, and he's now these awkward Thors. They're not going to be able to do too much for him unless he tries to hit a timing push. Uh, the follow this up is, is as a mechanic player, you need that third base up ASAP. You need six gases. You need that third base economy to produce out of all your factors. Otherwise, it was awkward production tab where you're like, currently I'm making one Thor. That's yeah. all I can afford. I have no <laughs> gas. It would be nice. It would be very ideal for Flash if he could get that hatchery. But running in and targeting the hatchery like this is not the way to do it. He just lost three of his all that's before anything went down. He's got a million transfuses. Now, part of why this is okay with me is because um, he actually gets he gets a few drones, as you guys can see. It looks like 10 went down in total. But also, it pulls the Mulus away for him to actually finally secure this base. Magic oh, Box does this. go down here. I don't like this trade at all for DRG. 
He's really trying to push this in and make these mutas work out. He is going to lose that Thor here, but the big repair. A Thor and seven SCVs plus the mules. I think it's okay. It's definitely not. It's definitely, if this was an even game, it would be a terrible trade. Actually, I think I might get this. Oh, no, he's not going to. He needs to get out of there. He's losing so many of his mutas. He just traded like seven mutas for that one Thor and a bunch of SCVs. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's, he's getting so far ahead behind this. Don't get me wrong. But. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a normal game, like, that would have been a terrible thing to do. We would have been like, I cannot even believe it. But I think with the position he's in, even the repair... Like, Flash economy is so bad, the repair is too expensive to actually yeah. finish. Like, he can't even finish repairing that Thor. I SB love stuff. the follow-up here from DRG. He's going for a gigantic Roach push. He's got speed finishing up plus one, and only the first tanks are being made now. He's got no tanks out on the field just yet. This is why I like those Mias. Force the Thors, these awkward Thors. The economy is terrible. It's hard to switch. He's got he has plus that. two. He's got to lift that, but these Roaches are getting right on top of the Thors. He's focusing on the repair, but that's too many Thors. They're just going to be burst down immediately. Yep. Three Thors get targeted down one after the other. GG. DRG takes it. In spectacular fashion, you see the way he puts that headset down, he's like, yeah! He's trying to look humble, but he feels so happy right now. Oh boy, that was a really nice game from him. There's too many roaches there coming in towards the end to end it out. He just got way too far ahead. Flash didn't have the answer for the Mutalus, then overcompensated for that, and then lost his like first score and tried to switch into tanks. It was just too late. Everything was just a bit behind. Dude, Dayon is on fire. He is, he's going up to like 75% at the end of the today. Yeah. Everything else goes his way. That is Flash having a pretty weak game here. We said it before, that was a game that Spenny definitely needed to win. DRG will do the job. Yep, and that's gonna, it's gonna actually make it possible for them to force the ace match. You know, it, it now is yep. really up to life. If you want to look at games that, um, are reasonable for Spenu to win, not games that would be a miracle for them to win. DRG has given them a great opportunity here, and the rest of these players need to capitalize on that. Flash's build was solid, but he, he did, I think, overcommit a bit with his Hellions. Even even later on, like you were talking about, he overcommitted a little bit. He wanted to get the Mutalist away from